Here at the Taskmaster Podcast, we love watching the contestants try new things, like eating watermelon off the floor with their bare hands, staging a funeral for a chickpea, or sitting on a cake. But we think it's about time that you tried a new thing, like skiing. Which is why we're very happy to say that today's episode of the Taskmaster Podcast is sponsored by Crystal Ski Holidays. Wow, what a great new exciting adventure skiing would be for you, your family and your friends. I myself have tried skiing in the past and there is nothing more exciting than washing down the slopes at top speed. I thought it was top speed, looking back on it, it was probably one mile per hour. Crystal Ski Holidays are so much more than the skiing as well. It's about the pre-ski, the après ski, and of course, the during a ski, during skiing. There's so much to do, so much to try. Learn a new skill today, specifically skiing, with Crystal Ski Holidays. They offer expert service every step of the way, from choosing where to go, getting help booking the right equipment, lift passes, and support while you're on holiday. They've been sharing their love of skiing and taking people to the slopes for over 40 years, so they know a thing or two about planning the perfect winter holiday. Book your place on the slopes now at crystalski.co.uk. Hello and welcome to the Taskmaster podcast. Ed Gamble here. I am the host. Uh, Today we'll be talking, as usual, about a specific episode of Taskmaster, breaking it down task by task and chatting about it with a special guest. And we are currently in the midst of talking about Series 5. And today we'll be talking about Series 5, Episode 3 with... Josh Widdicombe. Yes, Josh Widdicombe, the first ever Taskmaster champion and the first ever Taskmaster champion of champions, who will be the second champion of champions. I know, but I'm not going to tell you. Josh is brilliant. Uh, We've had him on the podcast before. Very much looking forward to chatting to him again. Now, before we get on to the wonderful Josh, I will tell you that next week's guest is Lou Sanders, her first time on the podcast, champion of Series 8 of Taskmaster. We will be talking to Lou about Series 5, Episode 4. So get your questions in for Lou, taskmasterpodcast at gmail.com. There will be lots of questions because she's never been on the podcast before. Keep watching Taskmaster, all available on all four. I'd say watch these episodes before you listen to the podcast. That will give you the full experience Check out the Taskmaster YouTube, plenty of fun stuff on there, and taskmasterstore.com for all of your Christmas present needs. But enough of that. Let's now talk to Josh Widdicombe about Series 5 of Taskmaster, Episode 3. Welcome back, Josh Widdicombe, to the Taskmaster It's a pleasure to be back. It's it's a pleasure to be back. It's so lovely to have you here, Josh, um, to talk about Series 5, Episode 3. Yes, Uh, it's all I talk about normally, so... It's good to finally have an outlet to talk about Series 5, Episode 3 of Taskmaster. I know, I've been over to your house for dinner before, and that's all you bang on about. Your poor your poor wife sits there going, oh, not Episode... At least talk about Episode 4 of Series 5, yeah. Josh. But I'm a upset. bore on the subject. I'm an utter <laughs> bore on the topic of Series 5, Episode 3. Um, what, are your, what are your thoughts on Series 5 in general? The, the line-up, the vibe, everything that happens? Uh, it's a nice lineup, isn't it? It, it was is. the one just before, uh, is the one just before I did Champion of Champions with Bob. Yes. So I think he he came off that and then went straight on to doing Champion of Champions. <laughs> if if I'm right in saying, yeah, not not even a t- not even a moment to relax and sort of bask in no. being a champion. He was straight back into competition again. I I think yeah. When he when he hit the Champion of Champions, he looked like he was burned out. He'd been tasked <laughs> out. So that's so. When you saw him on the day of the Champion of Champions record, you must have been like, "Well, that, I'm definitely coming above that guy. He's burnt out. That must be exactly. great." Exactly. He's exactly, mate. He'd, he'd given his all to, in Series Five, <laughs> and then he'd been asked to step up again. And I just don't think you should, should expect that of um, of someone, really. No, uh, but what what a result for you that was. What a, um, what a relief. Yeah, because you had to deal with Beckett, who was obviously nipping at your heels. Yeah, of course, Rob Beckett. Yeah, he was very good. Um, yeah, I was thinking the other day. I still can't believe that the final thing of Champion of Champions was just run for a minute <laughs> with GoPros on. What well, not GoPro, GoPros? Whatever those things are called, step count things. Yeah, pedometers. And you're like, you what? Sorry, pedometers. Pedometers. Yeah, and you're like, surely to God, 
this is the last bit. And you've literally, this is the basest task you've ever done in your life, Alex. But there's not, there's no way of Taskmaster uh, sort of amplifying the importance of what's happening with a serious task. It's never, it's always going to feel no. like a, a, no. a weird letdown because it's, that's the whole point. It's of supposed course. to be frivolous. Of course, of course. But it did feel like he'd just gone, I don't know, run with the pedometer on. That'll do, <laughs> won't it? Um, so sorry, let's, sorry. Let's, series five. Series five. Yeah, it's a good lineup. Bob Mortimer, Sally Phillips, Ashling B, Mark Watson, and of course, Nish Kumar, the worst Taskmaster contestant of all time. Yeah. Um, so and let's that, talk. Go on. He doesn't do that badly in this episode. I mean, that, he comes last. Yeah, maybe I was, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> in my head, maybe because he did well in the final task. In my head, that was that had prominence. Yeah, because that yeah. was playing table tennis with words. We'll get to that. But yeah. that's obviously way, way more up Nish's street than anything vaguely practical. But yeah. this episode does have what I believe to be Nish's crowning achievement in the task in taskmaster history so let's talk about the prize task first okay the thing they are actually proudest of yeah uh it's a good it's a good prize task this was uh, again sort of we're still hanging around the era of prize tasks where they're fairly simple they're fairly straightforward mm. you can you can definitely judge them in a simple straightforward way uh, thing they're actually proudest of. Did you, did you buy any of these? That these were genuinely the things that people were proudest of. Yeah, I did. Which obviously made it when when it's them, it obviously makes the um, the show slightly awkward for Greg, I suppose. When they're actually because Sally's was um, ge- yeah. a ge- genuinely good thing. Yes, it was very uh, impressive. Yeah, very impressive. I didn't quite understand it, but it sounded impressive. So. So she helped change the laws in Iceland to help improve the lives of pregnant women. Um, yeah. I I didn't feel, and I realised, that this is partly because it's a comedy entertainment show based on tasks. They they didn't really scratch down to <laughs> into what that actually meant, like how that happened. Do you know what I mean? Like, in terms yeah. of the prizes, it... For me, I was left with more questions than answers. <laughs> sure, sure. I, I know what you mean. It probably didn't necessarily fit with the tone of the show. No. Um, maybe there's, there's there's probably a hilarious outtake they could release on YouTube where they really get down <laughs> into the nitty gritty of, of the yeah. laws that she changed and what the issues were beforehand. If you, have you had her on this? Not yet, no. We are uh, obviously hoping could, to get her. When you have her on, if you could ask her what that actually involved. Yeah, what, sure. Why Iceland? Yes. Why... I don't know what her connection to Iceland is. I think I should know that, but I don't. I don't. Um, no, but it was very impressive. Yeah. And obviously, Bob's was quite emotive as well. Yeah, I think the problem. Obviously, Sally's would have won because it's yeah. so impressive, and and did she did such an important thing? It makes me laugh that it only got four points. Um, <laughs> but you can't really give Bob's spirometer that he used after his heart operation to test his lungs yeah. anything less than five points, can you? Well, exactly. Yeah, it's very difficult to compete with those two. Although, I also think that's because it's Bob as well. So, if it was Nish saying, here's my spirometer I used after my heart operation, yeah. I think Greg would have found a way to give that one point. Yeah, if I'd brought my inhaler, <laughs> do you know, I don't think it would have done yeah. well. Yeah, but that's more pathetic than the spirometer. Like that, that the spirometer feels like something he had to use, and that's all about saving his I life. To, and stuff. I, I have to use my inhaler to save my life, Ed. Yeah, but it's not the same. It's oh, what? Because I'm because so I'm a little nerd with asthma. Yeah, is that what it is? You're a nerd, mate. Because <laughs> hey, it's look, cool to have heart problems, but asthma's not cool. Is that what it is? Heart problems are rock and roll. <laughs> asthma is for math stoops. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I'm asthmatic now. I get it. Yeah. Yeah, oh. I do my brown do my brown inhaler twice a day, mate. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd say okay. that if you brought y- your inhaler, and I'd be like, "We've all got one of those, mate." One yeah. point. Yeah, all right, fair enough. Fair Thank enough. Thank you. Thank you. Fair enough. Um, no, it was, it, and I like the way he presented it as well about the little smiley face. Yeah. And it was, and you don't expect Bob to be that real or no. emotive. No, exactly, exactly. So I think fair enough. Um, and so those two obviously were the most kind of impressive genuinely the, proud and impressive yeah, yeah. to the to the point where i can't uh, i watched it this morning i'm struggling to place what the other three were right oh well, celebrity a... mastermind 
Yeah, I'm going to take you through them. So Mark Watson uh, brought in his Celebrity Mastermind Trophy as a thing he's actually proudest of. I I buy that. I you know Mark Mark no, is know. into hey. things like you don't you don't buy it. You don't buy it as something. It's quite that easy proudest. Celebrity Mastermind if you put the effort in, Ed. Mm. Did you did you win Celebrity Mastermind, Josh? Yes, I did. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Who are you I, up against? Um, a woman from Emmerdale. Right. Uh, and um, a not a naturist. What's it called? Like a naturalist? Is that what it's called? <laughs> like like a kind of Chris Packham bloke called Nick. Okay. Was he naked when you? No, he wasn't it? naked. Okay, so not a naturist because that that leather chair. I don't know if that. <laughs> That would have been a real awkward situation with the leather chair if a man had been sat there naked just before you're going up there. This was pre-COVID as well, so they weren't spraying down the yeah. chairs. Yeah. Oh, God. Imagine imagine knowing that you had to follow a naked man in the leather chair. You yeah. may as well just get naked at that point. I think. Yeah, exactly. Why not? Um, Why not? Catherine Mary, the runner. Um, but yeah. Oh, as in a sports runner. I thought you meant a runner on the show. I thought, did, did someone cancel? <laughs> <laughs> I think could Mark, you get me a cup of tea and also yeah. could you answer some questions about um, Aston might, Villa in the 1980s you might want to wipe it down um, <laughs> I believe that Watto would be proudest in his life of a celebrity mastermind trophy because obviously we're gonna you know yeah Mark's got kids right so you're gonna yeah. have to you're gonna have to cancel out things like that Bob's got kids Sally's got kids you know there's also things that you just need to nick straight away, and it does need to be a little bit frivolous and a little bit fun. Yes, yes. So I can see that the Celebrity Mastermind Trophy is the something the something that he's proudest of. Yeah. I just think it's sad that that's what he picked. Yeah, I, do, I think it, it... I'm now racking my brains as to whether I... I I've got... I haven't got that great a memory for what my prizes were, but I've got a terrible feeling point that my pointless trophy was one of them. And I, I think it might have been Josh. And I so don't you think can't... it went down well. No. So I, I wouldn't have wanted to, this to go down well because I, I like you. Obviously, want consistency. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it didn't go down well. It only got it only got two points. But you're right. I think you did bring in your your pointless trophy. Yeah. Um, I'm quite angry about that one as well, actually. Um, but of course, you had the tattoo, which. No one's ever going to remember any of your other prizes because you tattooed your own foot. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. How's, how's the tattoo getting on? I always like to check. Um, it's it's all right. I I don't even you know. Let me have a look. Yeah, it's still there. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's not going anywhere, mate. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> Sorry to say. Um, Ashling brought in a cape made out of twelve Irish flags, which she wore during the Fringe show, The Wrestling. Yeah. Firstly, just a quick side note. Pretty depressing to see. There's jokes about Brexit in series five of Taskmaster. That's how oh, long mate. this has been going on. Yeah, of course, of course. And it did make me realise that Ashton can travel around Europe and we can't. Yeah, wearing her cape freely. All she needs is her cape. She can just stroll through. Exactly. That's exactly. That's all she needs. That and, <laughs> and, and obviously her vaccine passport. Yeah. But um. <laughs> Uh, now um, I this is the one I don't necessarily buy. The case it's what she's proudest of. She's done a lo- she's done a lot, Ashling, in her yeah. career. Yeah, and I, I say this as someone who's never been asked to. Do, I think I got asked maybe who's never done the wrestling in Edinburgh. Yeah, but um, it's one of those things. Comedians they they really have they really they talk about it as much as I talk about series five, episode three of Taskmaster. <laughs> don't they? <laughs> they love it. They do love it. I've been to see it, and yeah. it is a lot of fun, and I can see a, you'd get a massive yeah. buzz off doing it. Um, yeah. But also bear in mind, I saw it, and I was just sat there quite angry to not have been asked to be involved, so it was an awful night for me. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I can see that. But she's, you know, she's very accomplished, Ashling. Now, if yeah. she did it now, I'm sure that's not what she would have brought in. Yeah. She's got, yeah. like, she got a BAFTA or something, hasn't she? She's been yeah. nominated for BAFTAs. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a, it's a good cape. Uh, and um, it was a great picture of her being lifted. Yeah, above the a picture, very the, strong man. Just to be honest, I'd have brought in the picture rather than the cape. Yeah, three points though. I think I think that was probably a, a fair score. Uh, yeah. Let's um, pop down to the bottom bottom of the table. It's it's Nish where yeah. he uh, where he lives. Um, it's a cricket trophy that he won for Clubman of the Year. Uh, yeah. That oh, he that won. Pathetic. He won for showing the most enthusiasm in the face of an overwhelming lack of ability, which. 
is an old bit of his stand-up, which was is fun to watch because he does it in exactly the same rhythm as he would do on stage. <laughs> he can't get out of that rhythm. There's... So the most enthusiasm in the face of, and I quote, an overwhelming lack of ability. <laughs> That's the problem, isn't it, when you're trying to weave old bits of stand-up into, into normal chat. It always reminds me of, um, I did a gig with Paul McCaffrey, yeah. and uh, he was comparing it. Yeah. And... Um, there was it was uh, above a pub in um, Leicester, Leicester Square, and it was one of those rooms that's so small. There's no mic; you don't need a mic. Yeah. And so he was comparing with his hands, like, like kind of David Cameron doing one of those cool speeches he used to do when he became yes. Tory party leader and he was all young, and uh, fooled all of us. Well, not me. I, uh, let's not get into that. <laughs> you loved him, didn't you? I did not love him. I yeah, once walked yeah. past him and he was smoking a cigarette head in the street. What? Anyway, um, what was I saying? Yeah, so Paul McCaffrey was doing the material like that yeah. and then he, doing his comparing like that and then he went into his material and his hand came across like <laughs> as if he was holding a mic. He couldn't help it. <laughs> that is absolutely amazing. <laughs> Stand-ups are sad robots. Yeah. Uh, we're all sad <laughs> robots. That's so funny. Um, yeah, that's the thing. Nish, you can see Nish sit up. He stops sort of relaxing in a very niche way and goes into niche persona. Although yeah. this was, I think that material was like probably niche year one or two. Right, I think he yeah. might have even done that at his first gig, which I booked him for. So I take full oh. responsibility for Nish Kumar. Uh, apologies. Um, but yeah, it's it's. I thought it was a, a nice story yeah. and a good prize. And it's clearly something he is genuinely proud of. But it's, again, very pathetic that he's proud of it. And it probably yes. deserved one point. Yes, totally and, agree. And it's only episode three, and Greg's worked out even in episode one that it's funny. It's funny to give Nish one point because Nish yes. just laughs, laughs yes. his head off every time he gets one point. Um, it was one point for Nish, two points for Mark's trophy, three points for Ashling's cape, four points for Sally's photo of her outside of the Icelandic Parliament, and five points for Bob's spirometer. That was my life for six months, and you have to get it from naught to five, and if you get it to five, a little smiley face appears. <gasps> and, and the Which day is... I got the smiley face activated, it was the proudest day of my life. It's called a spirometer, we can see it. Okay, so we can see it, that's it. Oh, oh, what yeah. a prize! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bob. I can understand why you're proud of that, and it's Thank a very you. heartwarming story behind it. In the... You're alive. Yes. <laughs> Task one, remove the table tennis ball from the pipe. Pipe must not be moved. Fastest wins. Your time starts now. This is one of the ultimate Taskmaster tasks that shows you um, sort of book smarts versus practical intelligence, I think. Yes, yes. Because there's um, some very intelligent people here doing some incredibly silly things. Yeah, it's a, it's an absolute... Cla- I... I I mean, I'm sure you have this as well, Ed. When you watch it, you can't help but think, how would I fare? Yeah. And I, <sighs> I'm I'm, not confident that I'd do a good job in this task. Yeah, I see what you mean. I, uh, my my arrogance still reigns fairly fairly uh, free. So I, I look at this and go, I'd, I'd be fine at this. Obviously, I'd just cover the holes like Bob did. Um, I certainly wouldn't do what Mark or Nish. I mean... It's so frustrating watching Nish do anything. And I think it's even more frustrating as someone who used to live with him and yeah. has seen him use cling film before. It's... Oh. So so Mark's trying to kind of outrun the holes, <laughs> at one, basically, right? He's trying to overwhelm the holes, I believe. Overwhelm the holes. Yeah, that's the <laughs> He just words. keeps pouring. He just gets as much liquid as he can. He's seen there, there are holes. He knows that there are holes there and what they're going to do. And he thinks if he can pour liquid quickly yeah then well eventually... you just need a lot of liquid you basically yeah. if you had a hose that would be feasible i don't think it would man because there's so many holes in it yeah see i do badly yeah see your thing i'm that still you having that. watched it go wrong i'm still arguing that it's a feasible plan yeah i don't think it is i mean i think you'd need like maybe a riot hose yeah like you'd <laughs> one of those ones boris johnson bought for the for london yeah <laughs> You'd need one of those. So basically, like, yeah, but essentially, I think what would happen there is it would be such a strong jet of water that, that you'd be moving the pipe. So you'd probably be disqualified. Yeah. Yes, of course. Um, um, yeah, I mean, you'd destroy the the room by that yeah. point if you'd done that. You'd, you'd kill Alex. 
Yeah, and you'd it, probably smash the ball. Yeah, it's probably not worth it overall no. to go to no, higher exactly. in higher in a fire hose or a riot yeah. hose or whatever you're getting. Just I think you just need to plug the holes up. I think you need to let that go, Mark, and plug the holes up. Um, but it's so funny watching Mark do stuff. He just oh, he's so great. He's so clever. But he's just then you ask him yeah. to do anything practical, and he's just he's just like a a comedy skeleton from the yeah. children's book. <laughs> yeah, he's. Um... That is the thing, isn't it? It exposes a completely different part of these people. Because you yeah. think of Mark Watson as someone who's, yeah, very intelligent, don't you? Yeah. I mean, well, same with Nish. If you'd only seen Nish's... No, I don't no. ever think about that. Yeah, but you'd know him. But if you'd only ever seen his stand-up, yeah. you'd think, well, that's one smart cookie. And then yeah. if you meet him once or watch him do anything like this, you know. I mean, basically, this whole series of this podcast is just slagging off Nish every week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and he's been on one of those weeks. Yeah, first week, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> he annihilated himself. <laughs> um, it took him 44 minutes, Nish. Um, th- that, see, this was the frustrating that's thing. That's insane. He, it's insane. He realised what needed to be done, so he blocked some of the holes. He even says some of the holes have been blocked. Block all of them, mate. Yeah. that's Just, just block all of them. And then he gets that cling film. And it wraps, just loosely wraps it in cling film. Astonishing. That's how Absolutely. he used to cover stuff in the fridge when we lived together. It's so frustrating to watch. <laughs> it's it's really, um, yeah, it's unbearable. And the thought <laughs> that somewhere that full 44 minutes of footage exists and how yeah. painful that must be to watch. Because we're watching an abridged version, a heavily abridged version, <laughs> and it's annoying. <laughs> That would be a great a great torture technique or or an art installation to show the full forty four minutes of Nish doing that. Go and sit in a room and watch that. I love the quote from Alex that apparently Nish at some point said, "Oh God, it's like a bassoon." Um, I would actually like to see all. I'd like to see another sort of maybe a longer a longer edit of that. I'd watch twenty minutes. So yeah, yeah, it'd be quite good. Like. You know, I don't know if you have things which help you get to sleep, but it'd be quite nice just to kind of lull you to sleep in the back of a not, car or something. That would not help me get to sleep. I'd be wide-eyed, my <laughs> dilated pupils just screaming at Nish, going, why are you doing that? Um, Ashling had, I mean, I guess a mini meltdown. I think we've all had this. That was, uh, I mean, that was, Master. Yeah, because she was like, I'm not moving the the thing, I'm moving the plate, right? And yes. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's its one of those things where you think you're being clever and then the moment you're sat in the room, I, you know, I still regret my turn a wheelbarrow into a cup of tea. <laughs> but I think those are the things that keep Taskmaster interesting, right? They are and the I things like- that keep it interesting, but um, in another way, they're also the things that make you look like a twat. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Ashley got away with with looking like that because and I think this is also the reason why she got disqualified completely she didn't try and argue it in the studio so yeah. she was literally like yeah I mean obviously I've I've moved the pipe yeah. there what I would yeah. have done is for 20 minutes in the studio yeah. said I, I, I moved the tray the pipe happens to be on the tray the ball was on the tray I was simply tipping the ball off the tray and yeah. just because there was a pipe there that doesn't make any difference to me I wasn't moving the pipe and then still being disqualified but also looked like an absolute wally yes yeah exactly yeah yeah but I she totally, just sort of goes, yeah, fine. <laughs> yeah, she she's actually a far more reasonable person than you or I, Ed. Yes, we're not reasonable people. We're awful. Um, let's talk about Sally. I mean, He's Sally's the, on, the only one who thinks, like, r- rather than use any liquid, yeah. well, she, she tries to initially, go in the top and, and get it. Such a good idea. And to have the, the correct hoover, because I was just... Yeah. Like... My Hoover, you couldn't you couldn't do it with a Henry. I'm going to tell you that now. Have you got a Henry? I think we've got a Henry. Yeah, you could. Do you know what? We've upgraded. With the, with we've upgraded to a melee, actually, Ed. Is that um, like a is that a French Henry? I don't know. I I just um, I does it have a little beret on? <laughs> an Henri. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah. I, we couldn't use our Hoover because no. like it needed. To, it just it's it's too perfect. It's so perfect. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it, it just is looks ideal. glorious the way it works. That's when you start really overthinking how they plan the tasks and start going. Well, they must have known. They yeah, the exactly. Yeah, for it. maybe they bought the Hoover in, hoping someone would use it. 
Whereas what likely happened is Sally thought, oh, a Hoover would be good. And it and it just so happened that the Hoover that they had was absolutely perfect for the task. Yeah. But it's genius. Yeah. Four, but yeah. still only four points. Again, she's been just uh, pipped by Bob as she was in the prize task. She did it in just under 13 minutes because she spent a long time using the funnel for no reason. Yeah. Putting straws in the holes. I mean, the funnel's in such an insane decision to try. Yeah, I didn't quite understand that. Was she trying to overwhelm the holes again? I she... think she was trying to overwhelm the holes. I don't know what... I think she initially got the funnel hoping that she could plug a hole with it, but then right. thought, try and tip it into the funnel. But to swing from such insanity to such genius, it's great. It's feast or famine, isn't it, really? With, yeah. uh, with Sally in that task. Uh, and Bob just... This is constant. So casual. That's this what I found. To, like, I, I felt like whenever I was doing a task on Taskmaster, I was in a state of anxiety. Yeah. And trying to do everything at double quick speed. And he's just casually doing it. Yeah, casually doing it, doing exactly the right thing. He's plugging yeah. the holes with the, ear, uh, the earplugs and using tape. And also, it's so much value. You get so much value from Mortimer. This is why he's a, a, a big favourite of people's, I think, in this show. Because not only is he doing the task in a consumer, relaxed and mm. professional way, he's also created a whole story. Of, he's doing a routine that he goes yeah. out and gets everything from, from these people outside. Yeah, He's asking Alex questions. Going, you, this makes me... I think about this most days. When he says to Alex, do you have a catchphrase? And Alex says, no. <laughs> and Bob says, why not? The wife. <laughs> why not why <laughs> and the and the person raising money for daft kids kids are a bit daft oh god it's just so good and eight minutes 13 it's it's a yeah. real master class in taskmaster yeah. i think really i mean i know you're not into football lad mm. but um is it like good football well there's often this thing said with like great footballers that they just look like they have much more time on the ball Right, interesting. Like they, they just—they're always in space, and they're always—they're never harried, and they're never hustled, and they've—and mm-hmm. that's—they've just got an innate ability to just be calm on the ball, and also always be in the right. And that's how watching Bob do that felt. That's interesting. Is that football? Football wise, is that because they're just better, or is it because everyone really likes their football so much they just give them a bit of space to watch them? Yes, Ed. Everyone sits back and watches Paul Scholes. <laughs> The other team applaud him as he passes the ball. That's what happens. So it looks like he's got more time because he does, because they're all... Yes, they because they know that football him. is, in the end of the day, an entertainment business. And so <laughs> he's pay- he's indirectly paying their wages, so they have to let him play. It's a good point. It's a good... If you shut down all the best people, you're going you're gonna to end up with less money in the long run, aren't you? Exactly, exactly. That's how it works. Yeah, oh, I knew it. I knew it. It's not a real sport. Um, <laughs> but getting a table tennis ball from a pipe is a real sport, and Bob yeah. is very good at it. Five points for Bob, four points for Sally, three points amazingly for Mark, who took 23 minutes, 10 seconds. Even more amazingly, it's two points for Nish, who took yeah. 44 minutes. Oh, and Ashling, God. of course, zero points uh, for Ashling. <laughs> so in summary, <laughs> Ashling entered the room... She got pissed. <laughs> she put some paper down a tube. Mm. She flagrantly ignored the rules and turned the tube upside down. Yes. Right. I yes. Get a point when a bird is in a tree and the tree is chopped down, the woodsman has moved the bird. <laughs> and you are directly quoting from my chest tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Today's episode of the Taskmaster podcast is brought to you by the best-selling board game, Ticket to Ride Europe. I can very enthusiastically tell you about Ticket to Ride Europe because I own Ticket to Ride Europe. It is a brilliant board game. It's a cross-country train adventure. You can explore the wonders of Europe without leaving your home. It's an absolutely massive smash hit. There's over 10 million copies sold worldwide, and it's time you discovered Ticket to Ride Europe. It's a very easy-to-learn board game. It's lots of fun for all the family. It can get competitive, sure, but also you can play it in a nice way so it's not competitive. It's really good fun. It's an ideal activity to bring your family and friends together this Christmas. I would highly recommend it from the bottom of my heart. It's great to do an ad campaign where you actually know the thing. 
And it's available now at John Lewis online and in store. Buy tickets to Ride Europe for this Christmas. <laughs> Task two. This is one of my favourites, this series. Make this coconut look like a businessman. Yeah, you have 10 great. minutes to plan your coconut businessman and then 10 minutes to make him. Your time starts now. This is this is good stuff, isn't it? It's a great task. It's exactly the kind of task I hated. Doing. Oh, really? Yeah. Didn't I hated the I'm I'm I do apologize if I'm repeating myself from last time, but I I struggled most with the creative tasks. Mm. Because might... you're not you're not very creative and you don't have any joy. Would that be fair to say? <laughs> Yeah, nail on head. <laughs> um, what would you have done? Would you have just panicked? Would you have panicked about it? I just, I'd always feel like, I don't know, because with the problem solving ones, you can just, you know, you've just got to do it and get it done. Whereas yeah. with the creative ones, it feels so infinite and it feels like everyone else is going to have these great ideas. And settling on an idea always feels like, you know, I, I found it too stressful, those kind of things. I, I well, didn't... Yeah, I mean, we've definitely talked about this before, but it just, it feels like it's too close to also doing your job of being a comedian. So yes. then there's an added pressure, whereas the ones where it's just like, get this ball in this thing, you're like, well, I yeah. can do that and I can I be can funny along the way by yeah. accident. But exactly. when it's like, make a funny thing, which is essentially what this is, it is it's more pressure. Um, exactly. And it... It it feels like the the kind of the more out there people are gonna be better at it. It feels a bit like going to Edinburgh Ed when we were the boring guys. <laughs> hey, I wasn't the boring guy. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm great fun. You um I yeah. know what you mean, yes. Yes. Um I once said I was going through a particularly rough patch with Edinburgh and feeling a bit like that, like I was quite boring compared to everything else that was happening in Edinburgh. And uh, me and me and my now wife were at London Zoo uh, just before oh, yeah. we went to okay. Edinburgh, and they have pigs at London Zoo. And I went, "That's what I feel like. I feel like a <laughs> I feel like a pig at London Zoo." <laughs> <laughs> Everyone likes pigs all year round, right? They come to London Zoo and they all want to see the lions and the tigers, don't they? And the poor pigs are sat there and no one's looking at the pigs. Yeah. She was like, "I'm not sure you should go to the fringe anymore." Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> but do you know what, Ed? They're much more likely to book a pig than a giraffe for Mock the Week. So you may... <laughs> you win some, you lose some. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Mock the Week, full of pigs. Full of, absolutely <laughs> full of pigs. Um, well, you say that, but obviously Bob is one of uh, yeah, the, most, and he, the, the he... most creative comedians of, uh, of any generation. Um, yeah. And he doesn't do very well here. I think he completely lost his mind. Yes, I totally agree. It... Uh, it, it... You presumed Bob was going to, you know, absolutely smash this task. But yeah, yes. it's, um, I mean, I thought Greg was quite harsh on it in the sense of it was still, there was an element of, there was some fun creativity to it. Yeah. I, I think it's still better than what I would have done, which I don't know what I would have done, but <laughs> I, 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 quickly I saw, decide now. What would you have done? Quickly, quickly decide now. Um, what, making a coconut into a businessman? Yeah. Yeah, I'd have just ended up just building, like, an outfit, wouldn't I? Yeah, I think I would have done something similar. Um, but with with Bob's, it's interesting because Bob is so good, but I think what Bob is very good at is elevating the normal to his level. Um, yeah. Whereas this is initially quite a wacky task anyway, isn't it? Yes, yes, exactly. And, yeah, I suppose, yeah, that's the thing. It's difficult to um, be wacky about wacky, right? Yes, yeah. Although, you know, I did enjoy it and I enjoyed the reveal of the coconut businessman and him just saying, I'm, I'm a fucking businessman. <laughs> well, the uh, thing with it was, I didn't realise it was bad until I saw the other ones. Do you know yes. what I mean? In, yeah. If you just showed me that, I'd have gone, oh, yeah, that's great. I was, I was almost like, you know, I, 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 I thought, oh, that's really good. And then you see the other ones and you're like, I mean, it's not as good as the other ones. But you're just wowed by anything slightly creative, right? Because you just don't, you just I, don't have a creative thought. I've never had a creative body. thought, Ed, in yeah. 38 years of my life. I've never had a you creative give, you thought. You give uh, uh, nativity plays a standing ovation, don't you? I do. You can't... And it's weird because I, my my daughter's too young to be in them as well. So it's, it's just doubly creepy when I turn up to schools and give nativity plays standing <laughs> ovations. 
<laughs> but I think uh, the criticisms of Bob's were were fair in that I think Bob himself says it wasn't a coconut businessman really. It was just a coconut character. Yeah. Um, so Sally, let's talk about Sally's, which <clears throat> I think was was quite harshly scored. This one, um, she created the scene with a coconut with a little suit on, but it was the details, Josh. It was the little details yeah. that I think elevated I it. Mini oyster card, they? a calculator. Yeah. I yeah. I thought that was really strong. And um, the graph that that money that money was going up so much over time. Yeah, I thought. I thought. I think this was a, a, a quality. I think there was high quality entrance across the board in this task. Yeah, yeah, they were. But for for me, that Sally was my four points. I'd say. Yeah. Um. So I think it was a real surprise for her to only get two points. It was my favourite little scene that was created. Although Ashling also created a wonderful scene with her coconut business lady. Uh, the 58 year old app creator yes um, there was a lot going on she created a real backstory there yeah would a 58 year old be in apps well this is it i think she was she was talking about breaking boundaries you know yeah it's never too late and you know there's you can imagine i think ashling saying that you know we we wouldn't we wouldn't uh be surprised by a 58 year old app billionaire if he was a man I but don't know about that. I'm 38 oh, yeah. and yeah. I already feel like I'm I'm 20 years beyond yeah the the kind of people that are creating apps. Yeah, I was going to say mate your your TikTok account is weird. You need to take it down. I haven't got a TikTok it. account, have I? <laughs> yeah. No. You do. Josh Whitcomb Josh Whitcomb official TikTok account. No, I I I, I don't need this in my head. <laughs> But Ashley's coconut business lady, I liked very much. Yeah, uh, I, I loved all the men drinking her blood. It's just there it was something very vampiric about the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, I I liked it a lot. I liked the red lipstick. I enjoyed many many of those details. Yeah, let's talk about Mark. Okay. Firstly, he took six minutes to open the briefcase. Yeah, that was incredible. So he's never <laughs> opened a briefcase, and I, that then made me think. Um, that... <laughs> Like, it is a weird way that a briefcase... Like, a briefcase is a different way. I was like, yeah, if I didn't know how to open a briefcase... Yeah. How, maybe it is different from every other opening. It is, but... You must have seen must it have, in films. Yes. There's so many briefcase opening scenes in films. Yeah. Of course, you know... Too many, if you ask me. Yeah, too many. They, they waste a lot of time with it, right? You know that you either push the things... Outwards or inwards, right? That's yeah. that's how it works. Yeah. And you'd try that. Even if you wanted to press it down, up, you'd get there eventually. But he start did he start messing with the code and stuff? He thought that it was part of the task to get the code. Oh god, yeah. Oh god. Just got god. in his head, didn't it? Six minutes to open the briefcase. If that was me, I I would have to leave the show. I'd be so ashamed. Yeah, that is it. It's but that it's diff I'm I'm sure I've told you this before, but I've I uh, I was on some the first time I ever had to break an egg was on Sunday brunch. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that's How that, did sure. that happen? How did well, that happen? Because I don't like, I've never liked eggs. Yeah, was well, fair enough, I suppose. Um, and so um, I've never in a, I've never been in a situation where I've broken an egg. Yeah. And, yeah. and then I got onto Sunday brunch and they were like, could you just break that egg? And I couldn't say I've never broken an egg before because it's a pretty alpha atmosphere, Sunday brunch. <laughs> so obviously I've seen it in the movies as well, but it is a stressful thing to do for the first time in your life is break an egg. Yeah, I mean, I'd say what's what's easier, breaking an egg for the first time or opening a briefcase for the first time? Well, I mean, at, fairly... least, at least with an egg, you know what the technique is. You've seen it a million times. But it did remind yeah. me of trying to break an egg on Sunday brunch. Are you, yeah. I can see you're Googling. Are you Googling Josh Whittacombe's Sunday brunch? No, I'm not. I'm actually Googling Richard Blackwood's Sunday brunch. Oh, um, yeah, that's... The, where so, he, doesn't, he didn't know what lemon zest yeah, was. Yeah, well, it was just sweet Richard Blackwood. <laughs> but then the video that's just come up, the first thing he does is break an egg very well. So oh, yeah, know, I, think, so. I think you're worse than Blackwood in a yeah. way. But I'll be, uh, be watching that video because that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe you broke an egg for the first time on Sunday brunch. That's great. <laughs> Um, but so let's talk about Mark's actual effort because when he opened the suitcase, um, he got on with it and he set the 
coconut up as what he claims is a businessman by setting up a Facebook group saying he'll answer questions. Yeah. But then he... he Where's the profit regist- in that? Well, yes, this is this is my point. He then registered the coconut with Company's House. This is yeah. the most impressive business aspect of it. This is what makes the coconut a businessman. Yeah. This is what gets him the points. But, Josh, yeah. that was done way outside of the time limit. Of course it was. Of course it was. It takes a while to register a Company's House. I think he's very lucky to have got these points. Is that... So, is that company still registered? Interesting. I mean, it's... Is it a shell company, Ed? Bit of oh, a... oh, Josh. That is sublime. Of... <laughs> um, but... Absolutely sublime. <laughs> what was the company called? When was the series broadcast? 2016, something like that. It's taken yeah. a long time for that joke to come out, but I think it's worth it. It's well, I've told you, I only talk about Series 5, Episode yeah. 3 of Taskmaster. So. <laughs> yeah, you've got you've got a tight, like, half an hour on this, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Your routine about this is longer than the show itself, actually. <laughs> um, Shell Company, that's good stuff. Thank you, thank you. Oh. Um, but, um, yeah, that's outside the time limit. The, the company's house, as soon as Mark was doing that, I thought, well, you need to register on company's house. I don't yeah. know what the legalities of that are. Because I'm pretty sure you can't register a coconut on Company's House. <laughs> so I think Mark's, to get it registered on Company's House, he might have had to commit fraud. <laughs> I'm sure you could register, you'd probably have, to, it would probably be a company still registered under Mark's name. Yes, yes. Posing as a coconut to, ask, yeah. to answer people's questions. So this is all, you know, this is all nitty gritty, but we need to talk about the nitty gritty. That's what the podcast yeah. is all about. I personally wouldn't have given Mark the points, but it was such an inventive and fun thing to do. I yeah, think Greg probably I thought just it was let a, that go. I thought it was more exciting than putting a suit on a coconut, because that's what your first thought is. Yes. Well, let's talk about Nish. I do believe this is this is Nish's best achievement, probably in his entire career. I can't even, and this is awful to say, I can't remember Nish's. Can you not? It, it got the five oh, points. It was yeah. rather than put... A suit on the coconut. Oh like yeah, yeah, yeah. He comes did. out the he door. He put a suit on and yeah. came out the yeah, door. Yeah, that's and really had good. The with coconut the, was with his the tie head. made out of money. Yeah, it is. Uh, the thing is, it's the best thing Nish has ever done. The money tie was fantastic. I loved it. It made me scream the first time I saw it. It doesn't, really took me by surprise. And doesn't it date it that people still had cash in those days? Yeah. <laughs> Nowadays, it'd just be a phone, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, Oh god, it made me laugh. Uh, yeah. Really also, Nish strong. knows it's good, and he knew that that because he's told us on this podcast he knew that he had about three strong tasks going into it, and that was one of them. So he was ready to showboat. There was yeah. no. Sometimes they cut back to the studio, and someone's done something amazing, and they're sort of looking a bit humble. They cut back to the studio here, and Nish is like, he's got a whole bit planned about it. He's ready to talk about it. He's got a whole <laughs> character based around it. He's so <laughs> proud of himself, and he's right to be. This is incredible stuff from Nish. I think his accent is dog shit. Yes, yeah, 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 but Nish is not an accent, man. No, no, no. no. Let's. <laughs> it's five points for Nish, four points for Mark, three points for Ashling, two points for Sally, and one point for Bob, a very unusual one yeah. point for Bob. Hello, I'm the coconut businessman. Off to do another day of lovely business. Is that the face of a man who's not going to come last for one? He's a businessman from the southern states of America, <laughs> Another day of lovely business, wearing my tie made of English money. Now, this task three... Yeah. There's three parts of this task. They can be completed in any order. Uh, and there's a jelly, a twiglet and a Weetabix in front of them. Part one, standing behind this rope, throw one of the items into the bucket. You may retrieve the item if it misses, but you must stand behind the rope on every throw. You may not move the rope or the bucket. Part two, eat one item. Part three, balance one item on top of the red pole. The item must remain balanced until the entire task is completed. You may not take the pole out of the ground. Do all three fastest wins. Your time started when you open the first task and ends when you've completed all three tasks. Love this task. Absolutely it's loved it. So Peak good, Taskmaster. It's really, you know I, mean? I mean, so strong. I mean, I, I mean, this series in terms of like memorable tasks is is pretty high up there. Um, this is just this is great because there's two ways you can really do it. You can try and complete the first task as soon as you open it, 
or you can open all of them, work out the best order well, to do it. The in. first two I watched, I presumed in my head that you weren't, that you had to do it because I was like, well, even though you know, because you're, you're only half listening when you listen to the rules, right? And so I presumed one of the rules must be, yeah, that you open them one at a time because yeah. otherwise you'd be fucking insane not to open all three at the start. Yes, yeah, totally. But is there that are a there fair are people summation. Who do that. I think that is fair, but also I think what you did there by assuming one of the rules was you had to you had to complete one before you open the next one. I think people would almost write that rule in their head while yes. they were doing it as well. So it's one of those ones where you just need to read everything and almost yeah. read what's not there as well. It's like jazz. Yeah. It's about yeah. the rules that aren't there. What say you'd opened all three? Mm. How would you have split it? Uh, it's a good. It, I mean, I think you. I think you're mad to eat the Weetabix. Yeah, I think so. I think I think you've got to eat the Twiglet. Really, is the it's the Twiglet or jelly? But yeah, I mean, I think you've got to throw the Weetabix. Yeah, I think yeah, I think you've got to throw you throw the Weetabix or the or the Twiglet. I think throwing the jelly would be mad. Yeah, yeah, totally. I it I I probably couldn't eat the jelly because of the gelatin. Is that would that be an issue? I think they'd probably sort that out beforehand. Yeah, um, it'd be a vegan jelly. Yeah, it'd be a vegan jelly, but then I think you just eat the twiglet. I think you you got to yeah. get the twiglet down, uh, throw the Weetabix jelly on the pole. Personally, I'd go, I'd I'd eat twiglet jelly on the pole, Weetabix in the bin. I think that's that's the way to go. I'd have, I think I'd have eaten jelly. Yeah, twiglet on the pole because I wouldn't have been confident about putting the jelly on top of the pole. <laughs> yeah, I mean you're probably right to not be not be confident in that because yeah. that happened. It, it did not look good. Um, but if you do it last, it's fine. Uh, so, look, Nish obviously turned up looking very cool. I still talked to him about this. He did look yep. so, so fit with his sunglasses on. Oh, and then man, proceeds... it looked too hot for me. It yeah. looked too hot. And there were a lot of people watching, apparently. People genuinely gathered around to watch this happen. Oh, my gosh. God knows what they thought was going on. Uh, <laughs> um, yes, well, Nish was disqualified from this because he didn't get an entire item into the bucket. This is the one of the pitfalls of trying to throw... The Weetabix. The Weetabix. Because yeah, if you you've dash it against got, the side of the bucket... You've basically got about 10 attempts before the Weetabix is unthrowable. Yeah, and you've either got to get it bang in the bucket or not touching the bucket at all. Yeah. Because if you hit the bucket, that Weetabix is, yeah. is coming apart. Exactly. Um, and Nish crushes quite a lot of it with his hand because he's frustrated. <laughs> yes. that's. I mean, that's thick. Yes, yeah, just thick. It's thick stuff from Nish. Um, yeah. I almost suspect he knew it was going badly, so he thought, let's have a bit of fun and just really take it through the floor. Um, yeah. Which, if you're Nish, you, you've got to do now and again. Um, yeah. Ashling eats the Weetabix so quickly. I don't, she's not read any of the other tasks. She eats the Weetabix before she's finished reading the task. Astonishing It's decision. such a mad decision. Such a weird decision. <laughs> I, I don't know if I could eat a Weetabix. No, I couldn't eat a dry... Well, I, I'd give it I a mean, go, I could. but... It would just be disgusting and yeah, difficult. Really foul. And on a hot day. Yeah. A dry Weetabix on a hot day, the worst yeah. combination. Um, but look, she completes the task, to be fair to her, and that jelly sliding down the pole, I think about that a lot. Yeah. That's it's, an it's iconic a moment. Beautiful isn't image. It? Yeah, yeah, it's really well. It's, it's really well shot, that bit as well. Like, it, it's a really nicely framed image. It's, yeah. Um, you know, and hats off un- to Andy Devonshire on that. Hats hats off to Andy D. And it's that unsaid thing between Ashling and Alex that they know they're just going to watch it slide all the way down the pole in absolute yeah. silence. So yeah. It's like very, very, very sad strip club. Um, yeah. Two points for Ashling, though, sadly. Mark, obviously watching Mark throw something. Yes. I don't know. It's it's so funny. I don't know what's so funny about Mark throwing things. It's like he's never he's never opened a briefcase and he's never thrown anything. Yeah, I mean he's such a nerd, isn't he? Apparently he's pretty good at football. Is he? I think so. Yeah. Well, he's you know he's felt, isn't he? Like he's, he's lithe. He's lithe. Yeah, and like he's physical as a performer. Yeah, totally. But yeah, he's just he's. He's not coordinated, is he? That's the thing. No, and it is a joy to watch. But he still yeah. bags the three points here. He, you yeah. know, he, he does everything that he needs to do. 
Um, yeah. And this is what someone messaged me last week being like, you're being really mean about Mark every week. You forget he came second in the series. You're like, well, did how it? did he do that? Not Based on the, p- the performance of this, those three episodes, it's absolutely incredible that he managed that. But he really throws himself into everything and he goes that extra mile, which is really important, I think. Yeah. Uh, Bob, uh, four points for Bob. Just nothing, again. Nothing more impressive in the world than someone getting a throwing thing right first time. It's so good. It's like that football thing again, isn't it? Bob's like Gary Lineker, isn't he, Josh? He is. He yes. Um, in in many ways, in that he's a nation's sweetheart as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gary Lineker, of course, is a ve- that's a very good analogy because he's a poacher who would just only take one shot to score a goal. Gary Lineker. So. Oh really? So, so it, you've it's actually like the Weetabix in the bucket. Some, well there. Somehow, unknowingly, stumbled on the perfect analogy. I know my stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, very cool from Bob uh, to get the Weetabix in straight away, but really takes a long time getting on that table. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is a man who's had a heart attack, though. Do you know what I mean? I can't imagine how worried Alex was when Bob was yeah. trying to get onto that table. Yeah, exactly. Um, does, like, was, you know, like, everyone moves the table to get to the top of the pole. Yeah. Were they expecting that to be a bit of the task that people weren't going to think to use the table? Do you know what I mean? I guess so, but Mark doesn't use the table because Mark's tall enough to pop the jelly on. Oh, right. Okay, yeah, yeah. Fine, fine, fair enough. Yeah. So Bob Bob and Sally have to use the table, I think. Um, Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's tricky, but I guess maybe they thought someone would ask Alex to lift them up or, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's many different ways of doing it. Um, but yeah, getting the Weetabix in straight away, and then but that's that's when the being unharried is that that's the word you used. Um, yeah, from from Bob takes its toll when he has to do something like get on a table quickly. He's just not yes. going to do it, is he? No, of course. Um, whereas Sally, I mean this this is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I couldn't believe it. It's just it's all or nothing throwing a jelly. Oh, eats the twiglet, Weetabix on the pole. Jelly in first time. Bang. So cool. Also, what an order to do it in. Yeah. Because <laughs> the gamble is the last one. You, yeah. Once you've eaten the twiglet, you've eaten the twiglet. I mean, I suppose once you've thrown the jelly, you can't then decide to eat it. That would be a low moment when you're eating a uh, a jelly that's, di- that's covered jelly. in sand next to a bin. <laughs> and there's definitely a world where Nish would have eaten a sandy jelly. Yeah. Um, but so cool from Sally, just so yeah, cool. incredible highlight of the episode in many ways. That that jelly, yeah, fry. loved it. Uh, so five points for Sally, four points for Bob, three points for Mark, two points for Ashling, and naught points for Nish, disqualified for crushing a Weetabix in his hand. <laughs> that was iconic, unbelievable. You can feel the tension in the room. She can't throw the jelly. <laughs> Absolutely incredible performance from Phillips. Do you want me to tell you her time? The mother of three, it looked like breakfast in a little bit. I've got three children and that's pretty much how we feed them. <laughs> <laughs> her time, she was half the time of anyone else. Two minutes and one second. Wow. <laughs> Live task. Play table tennis with words. When the table tennis ball is within striking distance, you must say a word while pretending to hit the ball with your bat. The word must begin with the last letter of the previous word. If you fail to say a word within the time it would take you to hit the tennis ball, you are out. After saying your word, you must run to the back of the opposite queue as the task progresses. Alex will serve the first word to the youngest contestant. Last player standing wins. This is... I would have absolutely melted at this. I'd have hated it. Also, when he read out the rules, I thought, I have no clue what any of that means. (laughs) I mean, essentially, like, it's just it's just a, a card game, Once they'd right? shown it, I was like, I understand what's going on yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. But I, that that was not the kind of task. I I was shit at the in the um the live tasks. That was I, I don't think I ever won one. Yeah, they they're stressful. They are stressful, especially things like this where the audience is watching you. You've got to come up with a word, or you could see the stress because there's a lot yeah. of words out there, and yeah. quite a lot of people were repeating stuff. It's amazing how the human brain works. I mean. I thought played into Nish's hands. He's very, he's very smart. He's got a lot of vocab. I mean, yes. only Nish could be eliminated from uh, a game for saying ecclesiastical twice. I mean, yeah, it, it, it's a real window into the soul, isn't it? What words yeah. you choose here, like a uh, 
A psychoanalyst would have an absolute field day with uh, yeah. what it says about the different people. Yeah, I'd say dog, then cow, and then I'd be out, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, whereas Nish has ecclesiastical and robot, <laughs> uh, which was the highlight. Nish versus Nish versus Ashling uh, in the final was a treat. Uh, I like the way yeah. they uh, they face off against each other. Um, but it's a really it's a fun one. But I wouldn't have liked to have played it myself. No, it wouldn't have been. Uh, it wouldn't have been my scene, it, my skill set. It wouldn't have. It would have got into my head too much. Well, let's have a quick blast of it now to see how in your in oh, your no. head it gets you. So if I start okay. off with uh, Taskmaster. Robot. <laughs> uh, tea time. Uh, egg. Great. Terminator. Rewind. David. Dick. Kevin, now I'm just getting into names. Nigel, yeah, I think we. It, yeah. I, I think what we can take from that, Josh, is we'd both be out immediately. Yeah, really bad. Yeah, and <laughs> the fact that the first two things I chose were robot because that's already been said, and egg, which was an anecdote I'd already told. So the first two words were things that were already in my head. <laughs> yeah, I think that's proved everything we need to know. Um, so the final scores of this episode, Bob out on top with 17 points, Sally with 16 points, Mark with 15, Ashley with 13, and of course Nish down at the bottom with 12 points. The series scores so far, Bob and Mark joint. I don't know how Mark is getting so many points. 51 points, Sally very close behind on 50, Nish on 44, and Ashley bottom on 43. Very interesting that, that Nish was ever not bottom. Yeah, it's early on though, isn't it? What is there eight in this series or ten? Yeah, there's eight. So there's there's eight. another five episodes. So there's plenty more time for Nish to pop himself onto yeah. the bottom there. Josh, you're a bit you're a busy boy at the moment. We'll have a quick chat about some of the things that you're up to before we say goodbye. Oh, um, that, that that that's very nice of you, Ed. You're still on tour. I'm still I'm on tour forever. Yes, seemingly um, because <laughs> there's just the fear that surely, surely not. They're not going to stop me doing it again, are they? With I think the, anyway, they might man. Oh I think, God, don't! I think you might. I think this tour might be going on until 2025. It's just just a hunch. And can I just be very clear? That isn't due to unbelievable demand. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you know like when Kevin Bridges did that first tour or whatever and it just yeah. goes on and on and on and on and on because more yeah. people want to see him it's simply because of a global pandemic means I can I just keep having to reschedule yeah. Middlesbrough <laughs> <laughs> but if you go to joshwiddicombe.com not you Josh don't yeah. you do that um, okay. people listening you, you can you can find some tickets for Josh's tour but do bear in mind if you book it now you might not be seeing it for the next sort of six years or so. Yeah, it will happen one day. Yeah, it will happen. It will happen. Think of it like buying a bottle of wine and sort of laying it down in a cellar. Exactly. And can I just be very clear, due to the uh, lack of topical nature of my stand-up, it is still the same show. <laughs> Great, good to know. Yeah. Um, you've got a book out as well, Watch Your Neighbours Twice out. a Day. Yeah. Um, Have you... I told you about the, uh, the, the book versus Taskmaster book, Debacle? No. Oh, so we it came out the same week as the Taskmaster book. Amazing. And um and uh on the day that the the sales came out in the first week, I'd missed out on the top ten by fifty copies or something like that. Oh my god. And then the next morning I got a call from my editor and I'd been actually I was in the top ten. He'd got it wrong because Taskmaster had been categorized as a puzzle book, so it wasn't <laughs> eligible for the top 10 and had been removed from the top 10 there's no better victory than a techni- than a technicality exactly exactly yeah. sunday times bestseller on a technicality yeah and you we all know that was your agent calling up the charts people and going i think you'll find taskmaster is a puzzle book <laughs> um uh, and you have a tv show starting on tonight right? Because this comes on, out on Thursday the 16th, doesn't it? It does. So it starts tonight, uh, one night in with uh, Alex Brooker. 
so this this is a this is a show where you and Alex go somewhere and spend spend the night there, but it's not like just going to a hotel, right? No. So uh, the first one we got uh, the run of Alton Towers for the whole of the night to do whatever that's we wanted cool. with it. That's. I mean, that's a dream. I don't know if it's your dream. No. Well, you've been to a theme park with me, but Ed. yes. Yeah, well, to be honest, like we had it. the run of that because no one was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they built an ind- the world's biggest indoor theme park in Dubai and no one goes to it. It was literally just yeah. me, me, Josh, Lloyd Langford, Maisie Adam and uh, and Will Briggs. Yeah, well, that basically me and Alex had the run of Alton Towers with Roisin Connerty. Um, Amazing. Uh, for the night. And um, I'd say it was, I did all the roller coasters, Ed. Well and, done. Yeah, thank you very much. And um, it was genuinely one of the best experiences of my life. We also did London Zoo, uh, Legoland. Did you see the pigs? uh, The pigs at London Zoo? We did. We we did see the pigs, yeah. You've got to go and visit the pigs. I feel so sorry for those guys. Yeah, I know. They're never going to get nominated for the Perrier. (laughs) And and, uh, the Natural History Museum with Ashling of this parish. Oh wow, that's that sounds brilliant. So that starts that starts tonight on Channel Four. Go and check that out. Nine PM. A lot of fun. Uh, let's rate the podcast now. Josh, of course, I will ask you to rate your experience on the Taskmaster podcast between one and five points, or as it's otherwise known, between Nish and Bob. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how would you like to How would you like to rate it? I've enjoyed myself. I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. Uh, I'm quite hungover, so I was quite fragile yeah. going into it, but I, I've had a lovely time, and it's got me, and I, this is highly important when hungover, an hour closer to bedtime. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to call it four. That's how we see ourselves on the Taskmaster podcast. We're just sort of ebbing away time until people can sleep again. Exactly. <laughs> that's what that's what podcasts are, Ed. Yeah. I was going to mention you were hungover at the top, but I thought let him just let's watch him play his own game. And you know what? You've smashed it, mate. I'm giving you five thanks. personally. And oh, I don't normally thanks, rate the mate. guest. Thank um, you. Well done, Josh. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Uh, we'll. We'll drag you back on again sometime soon. Goodbye. Yes. When I'll be promoting the tour in 2023. Yeah. (laughs) There we go. Wonderful episode with Josh there. Thanks very much for coming back on. We'll twist his arm and get him back on again in the future. Thanks very much for listening. Don't forget that next week's guest is Lou Sanders. We'll be talking about episode four of series five. So get your questions into taskmasterpodcast at gmail.com and watch Taskmaster on all four. And we will see you next week on the Taskmaster Podcast. Bye! For more Taskmaster, subscribe now.